everyone, this is uh, Gilmer, and this is episode 3 of my Let's Play Revolution Under Siege Gold. And um, I might not be on for long because it is thundering and lightning outside. Not really lightning, but there is thunder, so I guess there's lightning with it somewhere. But it's supposed to pass over, but I could lose power at any moment. So I just wanted to uh, I'm, you know, let you know I'm probably pushing it a little bit just to be playing while the weather's like this um, one thing I wanted to show you uh, one of our viewers ice 5643 I believe his name is wanted to he he had mentioned that I didn't make any choice and when I pull this up this screen up red unity or Bolshevik dictatorship it's blank but when I scroll down here it says the Reds stayed united and ruled by a coalition of Bolsheviks and left socialist revolutionaries. That's the decision I wanted to make, and that's the, de the decision I thought I had chosen. So I'm glad if I didn't make that decision and I still got this, um, I'm happy for that because that's the decision I wanted. So I think um, I think we're okay uh, if, if that was something that I messed up. Well, at least I was fortunate that the choice that was made for me uh, was the choice that I would have taken. So I think we're okay there. Um, I'm looking at some of these guys, and, and some of them are, you know, I have four three-star generals. Um, well, I don't know if this guy is considered a three-star general. It, it, I don't know what that means. That means he's an overall commander, I guess, but... I don't know if that means he is able to actually make, um, you know, if somebody's in in close proximity, if they can actually become a core. Um, well, it says this guy is a core, and he is a core of. Look at the, look at the power. That guy has a lot of power. Seven sixty four. Okay, it's time to get him into the. Time to get him into the game. Put him to work. We've got some stuff going on that we need him to uh, counteract. He doesn't have a commissar, though. That's that's a little bit... Um, that says it's not locked. But usually when these units are are still building they're locked but it says that he is not locked so let's put him in this force and see if it locks it no it doesn't so we'll let him stay in there we will actually move him we need him to start counteracting some of these people let's well it won't let him move. So he is locked if I leave that guy in there. So I'm... Fighter for freedom, fighter for freedom. These trains... Nope. Let's take him out. Of course he gets dropped into somebody else, but... Um, let's see now if it'll move. Yes, it will move. Um, four days. Ten days. Fourteen days. He's active too, so... Um... You know, moving by train, he shouldn't lose too much cohesion. What does it say? Why is this in dark gray? Well, for whatever reason, we need him. We need him down here. And uh, I know that he'll be out of the range of his commander, his three-star commander, but... We definitely need him to come down here and and counteract some of this stuff that's going on. What we what what other things that we do? 
excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, some of the one of the other things that I want to do is um, we need to start building artillery. Well, we don't actually have artillery units except except those armored trains that we could build. Heavy armor train, 23,000 rubles, one conscript, and 20 supply. Light armor train. Um, I can't really. Uh, Tom Flamang, I think, uh, was saying, could you uh, just click on their units? I can't click on the units over here, and I can't really do anything here, so I'm. I'm really constrained on what I can look at um, I really want to save up enough war supply so that I can fortify Moscow so I, th I don't think I'm going to do that for now I don't think I'm going to build any armor trains I'm just going to be happy now he's at 276 but he's locked and that's uh, not locked but he's he's very weak so a 63 and he's a 143 145 I mean so he'll be okay I think he should be okay there if that guy decides to attack him. I think he did actually attack him already once and lost. So I'm going to leave him there. And then I thought I had built uh, some of these red guards, and I'm not sure if that's what these guys are. I don't think so. Um... I want to uh, I want to get these guys some of these guys out of here but most of them are locked so I can't move them the Grozny Reserve is unlocked but the Grozny Reserve has a uh, armored train with them so I'd have to come up here and fight this guy to get through here to get to uh, Novorossiysk. So I think what I'm going to do is wait till that, wait till this unit gets there, um, match them up, and then move north and see if we can't fight him. Of course, we're going to have to cross a river. If he's if he's active, if he's active, I could probably move him up through here and get there by one turn. But he's not active right now. But maybe he'll be active when he gets there. So, really, not too much, still not too much I can do. He's active. He's the guy in there, though. I'm going to leave him there. See, there's not much, not too much I can do. Even these guys are, are locked. They're garrisons, though. But they're red guards, too. So, hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have a hope of holding out. Um... It'll take five turns to get enough war supply to fortify Moscow. Well, I went through all these messages. There wasn't really anything too mind sh earth shattering or mind blowing. Um, getting a lot of these little rebellions, but a lot of them are not really. They're way down here, 
on the map. They're not anything I really want to care about in the Turkestan steppes. Um, that's not too concerning to me. Um, we can move him. Oh, wait a minute. Can we... Yeah. No sense in just leaving him there. So we'll put him on our train and we'll get him to Petrograd. And then, um, what else? Tashkent Depot and Tashkent. See, I had control of that, but look at where it is on the map. I, there's no way I can uh, save that. These guys are locked can't move them so uh, lots of these captures are in way off far out of the way places um, I can't move them because they're blocked well maybe I can wait a minute let's see let's see well we'll, we'll plot a move and see if we can't move him because I don't think he really has a chance up there by himself. Uh, the Western Whites captured Archangel, Archangel, Archangelsk. I don't know how to pronounce that. I know it's Archangel at some point in its history, but control of Merv. See, these are all on the edge of the map. So I don't think I'm, I need to worry about them too much, but... I do. I don't know why there's a, a lag in that map. Um, well, morale's down by one. Uh, changes from objectives under our control. It's a minus one. Um, I don't know what else to do here, to be honest with you. I want to do stuff that helps me, but diplomacy. Uh, I did choose that. Let's see what replacements look like. See if I use... No. We can't buy too much, but we can buy a little bit. And uh, 23. That's what we'll do. Oh, here are my units that I, I bought. It'll take them one turn before they are on the map. So I don't know if that's what Tom Fleming was asking about earlier about uh, to end all wars showed us how long it would take for units to get on the map but that's probably the the screen he was talking about f2 um, this is a production queue so some of these um, some of these bigger units these are actual infantry units some of them are only one turn away and then I have one that that's in a, t a zesk I think that's actually a place where I'm going to lose control. Oh, well. If it is, it'll be one of those situations where I learn my lesson not to build too close to the uh, enemy. So let's execute this turn and see what happens. Probably not anything good, that's for sure. <laughs> it's starting to look like that. Although I do have that one large formation that I'm moving down here is uh, 700 power. That's nice. And he's going to be on train, so he should keep most of his cohesion in combat power when you uh, move by train. You do lose some, I'm sure, but um, it's not as bad as actually trying to march across country. So we'll see. We'll see if we can't um, 
you know, push him back in a couple of places. It'll be uh, it'll be fun to watch, especially if we win. It'll definitely be fun. Um, this is a really a um, as I mentioned in my last episode. This is I'm playing by the seat of my pants here. Saratov doesn't look. Right. Oh, Red Victory and Saratov, no commanding general. They had a five four four. But see. If I lose 300 and he loses 400, that means he's 2,500 of my 1,800. Eventually, I think these, well, no, they lost two, two units, two elite units. Nice. That is very nice victory right there. Um, see, now I don't understand that one, although... I was, I think I was evacuating. Maybe that's why I lost that battle, but either way. That's where I have a unit that I'm building and they're sieging it. So he'll pro I'll probably lose that unit. Trying to kind of look and see the correlation of forces to see if I have, you know, have a an advantage in some places. This is up to the north. Just uh, loss after loss after loss after loss. Look at that. I have a unit of 345 right there I think he was locked on the last step on the last turn hopefully yeah that's a loss they destroyed them completely Um, these are still all small battles I'm not losing any national morale for losing these battles although some of them are objectives and a Katarinadar I think is one of the objectives and if I lose it then I, I definitely uh, probably lose national morale should be us yes I don't know if I was doing that on purpose or what was going on there that's the guy yes sir what is that oh it's a light armored train so we destroyed one of their light armored trains nice that's that's the uh that's that formation that I was saying had a, a power of 700. He, uh, that's nice. I like that. He went down and, uh, did some good work. That guy, that guy kind of looks like a, a movie star, actually. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but. An old, an older actor, I think, that played in some movies, uh, some war movies. I think um, I could be wrong, but anyway, 
I'm really happy that that one formation got into the battle, got into some battle and 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 won it, destroyed one of their little units. See there, I've got this uh, requisition icon sitting here. If I lose this, then I probably that probably is not going to work. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to get any money from that requisition. Okay, let's see. A storm is happening in Europe. A storm is happening in the Central Asian. Imperial family executed. If you know anything about Russian history, um, the, uh, the czarist family was all killed. Um, I, for, I forget his name. He was uh, Alexander II, I think. And uh, his whole family was executed. They actually made a couple of movies uh, about maybe one of the youngest daughters surviving. And actually, I think in real life, one of a, a woman came forward and claimed that she was Tsar Alexander's daughter. And um, I think they proved that she was not, but she they ended up having to uh, commit her maybe because she believed it or kept saying she was it. But, um, yeah, the whole family was executed by the Bolsheviks. And if you ever watched the movie um, Dr. Zhivago, no, no, not to, Well, they do talk about it in that movie, but there's another movie that I watched where it showed the family's last days. Um, I forget the name of it, but... Uh, you know, a lot of atrocities were committed in his name. So, um, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people don't feel any any sympathy, but I don't think his family should have been. I mean, he had young daughters, and a, his son was a hemophiliac. He suffered from hemophilia, which was, which is uh, the uh, what they call the royal curse, where from um, you know inbreeding, basically marrying your cousins. Uh, this uh, rare blood disorder where you can't um, you, your blood won't clot and he, his son uh, suffered from that but the whole family was executed the Sovnarkom has decided the death of the entire imperial family incarcerated in a cat at Rindenburg. the event provokes what provokes worldwide indig indignation but has paradoxically little impact in Russia and actually, he is a cousin. He was the cousin of the ruler of uh, of uh, England or Great Britain at the time. And if you ever see a picture of them two together, the him and the uh, King of England, I think it might have been Edward the Seventh. Uh, they look they look like twins. They look exactly alike. So a lot of these uh, royal families were uh, related. Let's see. Some of your leaders may have lost seniority due to some politicoms sanctions. Uh, the Sovnarkom have delayed the anti-Cossack policies. We're allowed to build some uh, Cossack units because of that decision. That's one of them. Um, he's still moving. He's unlocked. Um, hmm. Let's see if uh, we can just take that car. He's unlocked. We'll take. Him. Let's see what we can do with him too. I don't. I don't know if the, I think this guy is completely on his own at this point. So let's see what's going on here. The Third Red Cossack Brigade. One ninety. This guy is three sixty one. Let's see. He let's see what we can do here. Five seventy seven. See, that's a pretty strong force right there. That is a very strong force. But he's getting to the yeah, he's almost completely used up all of his uh, command points. 
Um, I don't. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, enable division command for this leader. This will cost you 10 money and one. And what we're going to do here is we're going to see if we can't. just use up one of my command points. I don't know if you can hear me. I put the microphone down. Um, so yeah. Sleep timer off. Oh, great. Um, oh, sorry. I got a little distracted there. My uh, remote TV remote was acting a little funny. So let's move. This is it. This guy's inactive, but he could take this this place and then we'll move him. The what his weight is 1053. And this can this transport can transport 48 at a time. Um yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him. I'm going to move him this way. So he'll, it'll take him 13 days, but I don't see any unit of theirs that can um, compete with this guy. So I think he will uh, do just fine on his own. The, that weight is, is uh, 8. The, this weight is 22, so we'll we'll evacuate some of those guys by transports. But this 569 power is going to move on his own up through here, get to uh, Saritzen, and maybe we can fortify Saritzen. So let's see. This guy is still locked. The red guards there that are still locked. He is still locked. They are not locked anymore. This formation is not locked. So let's. Well, let's. I don't like units that combine. When I don't want them to combine, um, you know, there's sometimes when they combine, they really screw things up. Um, he's unlocked. Let's move him here. See, we lost a Zesk. It has a small arms factory plus 25 ammo a turn. That's not good. Let's see. Let's see. The third Fusiliers Brigade, the fourth Fusiliers Brigade. Um, they don't show as being locked, but we know how that works. So they're a power of 81. Um, they say that they are built, so let's actually, let's put them in the Raja Red Army. Yeah, he's, so that puts him at a power of 352. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, I wonder if this Cheka. Yeah, the Cheka the Cheka can can move now too. So I put that Cheka unit in here. So maybe that'll keep him from locking. Actually, I could make him a core too if I wanted to split him out. But I really don't have any troops for him right now. So let's see how that works. He's not using hardly any of his his uh, command points either. This guy's locked. Oh, that's just, I don't like the looks of that. Actually, 
let's don't. Um, the the gold train is more important here. So let's keep let's keep this 369 power there. Excuse me. And um, yeah, let's see. Anything else going on that we need to look at? Um, did we we bought some of these last turn? So we're in a lot better shape now. Um, yeah, we're in good shape there. And then, of course, we surrender to the Eastern Whites in Region of Zesk, losing one unit. We lost one National Rail Point, so now we're down to 118. The Eastern Whites are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't get a point, I guess because Zesk was a, a strategic city, maybe? Uh, see, we're still losing. While taking Penza, we captured 57 supply carts and five crates of ammunition. Nice. Um, okay, so I need to go through these two off off camera. So I think I will. Uh, let's just take a look for just a second. No, that's not who we wanted to look at. This guy. So he's still unlocked. And um, what's he doing out there? Uh, let's see. He's unlocked. Let's move him. What are you doing? There you go. Let's move him back to... Takes him six days. Takes him two days. And, uh... One thing we need to do... Politics. Hold Moscow at all costs. I'm at 45 war supply. What was that? What was that? No historical. Uh, Recomplete the railroad. Gain 100 rail transport. Minus 20 war supply. Damn it. I really need... Um, it doesn't look like it resupplies that rail transport every turn it doesn't say plus anything like this one says plus 18 every turn this one doesn't say plus anything so anyway um i'm gonna i'm gonna close this let's play uh just because um i appreciate you watching if you have any any questions or any uh advice or anything like that uh please let me know thank you for watching uh please press like and uh I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.